we have seen that uh, uh, in higher when enter into the D1 the time taken by this to complete this semicircle is equal to the time to change the polarity of this oscillator so this 0 plus minus so the time taken by this cycle is equal to the time taken by this frequency oscillator to change the polarity of D1 and D2 so if suppose the time taken by the ion into D1 to complete the semicircle this one is T by 2 so when it complete one revolution the time will be T so T is the time to complete uh, one revolution by the ion into the D's I am repeating again this point the time taken by the ion into 1D is T by 2 and to complete the next semicircle into D2 is again T by 2 so the total time taken by this ion to complete a one revolution is T so T is the time to complete one revolution so from here one can find out the frequency of the revolution but before that that frequency is represented by mu c this is time period and this is frequency of the cyclotron this sign but before that i want to mention one more important point that uh, as we know that when a um, charged particle in, enter into the uniform magnetic field perpendicularly it basically the, uh, this follow the circular path where V is the velocity R is the radius of that circle Omega is the angular velocity and the relationship between these three is P is equal to R Omega and we have seen that from earlier idea where this uh, low range magnetic force behaves uh, like a centripetal force or x like a centripetal force so that qvb is equal to mv square upon r and from here v cancel out r is equal to mv upon qb so v is equal to this mv omega upon qb if i put the value of r from here so this omega is equal to this qb upon m omega is the angular velocity this is angular velocity of the charge particle so omega is equal to qb upon 2m and omega is related to the angular frequency angular frequency this frequency how many cycle it completes in one second omega is the angular velocity and it is related with the angular frequency frequency omega is equal to 2 pi nu and this is equal to you can write qb upon m so nu is equal to qb upon 2 pi m so this nu is equal to qb upon 
2 pi n is the frequency of this pi n or the frequency of the cyclotron. So, nu c is equal to q b upon 2 pi n. This basically you can conclude through this omega angular frequency. Idea velocity radius omega this velocity uh, by which this charged particle enter into the uniform mag uh, magnetic field and omega is the angular velocity and from omega and this relationship of the r you can find out this frequency of the cyclotron this frequency of the cyclotron again is independent from velocity radius there is no role of phi there is no role of r so this frequency cyclotron frequency frequency of this charged particle is independent from the radius and velocity so here this is you can write nu c further b upon 2 pi Q upon sorry Q upon M into B upon 2 pi or 1 upon 2 pi further 1 upon 2 pi Q upon M and into B. So these are the two factors basically which play the important role. If you are increasing the magnetic field, the frequency basically increases the frequency of this ion into the d depends on the specific charge and the magnetic field which is applied right so it is independent from the radius of the orbit and velocity of the charge particle so it does not matter what is the velocity of the charged particle when it enters into the uniform magnetic field. It basically depends on how much magnetic field we are applying. So if we are increasing the magnetic field, obviously its frequency will increase because nu depends on the specific charge and b. The specific charge of the different particles are different so major uh, role is coming of this magnetic field in terms of the frequency of this ion next the point this ion comes out from this window uh, we assume only when radius of the orbit becomes equal to the radius of the D. If radius of the D is capital R, capital R is the radius of the D, small r is the radius of the orbit. And we are saying that these particles are coming out only when this small r is equal to capital R. So, substituting this value of R here, we get R is equal to mv upon qb. And from this, right now the velocity of that particle will be R qb upon n. So right now the velocity at which this ion comes out through this window, then that time radius matter, magnetic field matter and this m mass or especially this is not independent. So q upon m is specific charge, magnetic field and the radius of the t. It decides basically the velocity. And at this particular time, when it leaves the window, 
आयंस है मैक्सिमम काइनेटिक एनर्जी तो काइनेटिक एनर्जी ऑफ द आयन इज इक्वल टू वन बाई टू एम वी मैक्स स्क्वायर एम वी स्क्वायर सो काइनेटिक एनर्जी ऑफ दैट पार्टिकल विल बी इक्वल टू वन बाई टू एम आर स्क्वायर क्यू स्क्वायर डी स्क्वायर अपॉन एम स्क्वायर वेर एम वन एम कैंसल आउट सो दिस इज टू एम सो काइनेटिक एनर्जी ऑफ द एमिटेड पार्टिकल एक्सिलेटेड पार्टिकल विल बी इक्वल टू आर स्क्वायर क्यू स्क्वायर अपॉन बी स्क्वायर आर स्क्वायर क्यू स्क्वायर बी स्क्वायर अपॉन 2m. So this is the kinetic energy of the ejected, yeah, this ion, uh, which is coming from the window. Kinetic energy, velocity, frequency. These are three important parameters of the accelerated ion. Frequency of this cyclotron. is known as this one q b upon 2 pi n and this q b upon 2 pi n will be equal to the frequency of this accelerator oscillator so new of oscill frequency of the oscillator should be equal to the frequency of the cyclotron if this happen that particular situation is known as the resonance a new word is coming resonance what is the resonance resonance is the situation when the uh, cyclotron frequency is equal to the frequency of this oscillator then that time this particular situation is known as resonance and only then it will work right and velocity is r cube upon n and from the velocity one can find out the maximum kinetic energy of this particle using the simple formula 1 by 2 mv is square but uh, there are some limitations when we accelerate the particle it basically approaching to the velocity of light if it is true the mass basically changes drastically according to the einstein relativistic theory relative theory says that if v velocity of any particle is approaching to the c or v is comparable to the c then we observe relativistic effect and according to the einstein relativistic theory mass of the particle becomes m is equal to m not upon a square root 1 minus v square upon c square if suppose cyclotron accelerate the iron at this particular velocity which is comparable to the speed of light then we will observe the relativistic effect and mass of this particle will define through this m in earlier rest mass is m no but now when we are observing the relativistic effect then that time mass of the particle will be this one m if v is equal to c then you can see here clearly this becomes 1 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 and when you will divide this m not by 0 it becomes infinite which is impossible 
or impossible, then it will be very difficult situation to handle here. The mass of this ion, we know the mass of proton, that is one point mass of the proton is equal to 1.67 into 10 raised power minus 27 kg. So here this is M naught. This is rest mass of the proton. But if this particle accelerated by this way, it where its velocity becomes or approach to the speed of light, its mass, rest mass will define through the relativistic mechanics m is equal to m naught upon square root 1 minus p square upon c square and that will be infinite. So there are some limitations. You cannot accelerate electron. Electron is a very light particle as compared to the proton. Mass of the electron is 9.1 into 10 raised power minus 31 kg. That is very small as compared four order small as compared to the proton. So it gets quickly accelerated as compared to the proton and uh, uh, is not accelerated properly. It destroyed an area inside the uh, cyclotron. But uh, physically this is a situation which arises into the uh, cyclotron on the basis of the speed. If V becomes becomes or approachable to the speed of light then we use this relativistic mass formula where m0 is the rest mass rest mass means as we define normally mass of the proton mass of the neutron these masses known as the rest mass when we use this formula here new mass of that particle will define according to the Einstein theory of relativity that will be infinite. So there are some limitations. I said earlier that this is a very important device or apparatus. This is not a small apparatus, but is used a number of places to study the nuclear structure. Earlier Lorentz, when it was developed basically, developed by the Lorentz and Livingston in 1934, it was used to study the nuclear structure. And nowadays, a boy chooses to study the solid structure, crystal structure, material properties, a number of places we are using this cyclotron. 